Hi, this is Catherine Rosa with Boarding Geek here at Spiel 2018. I'm sitting here with Rafael Tennis from Game Brewer and he's here to talk about Google. Yes, Google. Exactly. Very anticipated. Yes, uh, so the game is set in 16th century China mm -hmm. uh, during the reign of the Longqing Emperor. And the idea of the game uh, with the author, Andreas, came because he read upon this really funny custom where the officials working inside the Forbidden City, because that's where the name refers to, Gugong means actually the Forbidden City in ah, current day Chinese. Um, so the officials obviously uh, were being bribed uh, by Chinese you know, families, the role we take on in the game, and they couldn't quite accept just normal bribes. So no. the trick they had found was to accept gifts from people. So me, for instance, being part of a Chinese family would send an envoy, they would exchange gifts, and those gifts had a symbolic meaning. So yes. that is actually how the idea of the game originated. And that is exactly what we do. So this, this custom actually was the inspiration uh, for the game and every game uh, starts with we have four cards in our hand mm -hmm. and these all have a value as well so every object has a number and we try to do certain actions by exchanging cards from our hand with the cards that are on the board mm -hmm. so I'm going to exchange a gift card from my hand for instance with this one but the trick is the card, like the value of my card, has to be of a higher value than the one on the board. Uh -huh. Because the idea behind that is I would get something back less valuable, so it seemed like I wasn't getting a good deal out of it, but really I am, because again of the symbolism behind these cards. Mm -hmm. And then the card that I get, so the gift I get back from the official, I'm actually going to put it face down back on my player board, so like this. And that will be my hand for the next round. Okay. So obviously my the values of my cards are just going to keep decreasing. So eventually I will have to actually swap cards of a lower value with one of a higher, but that will cost me. So I will have to give up servants. I might have to sacrifice another gift from my hand. And that is kind of how the game rotates. Okay, so you're, you're kind of trading out your hand constantly exactly. and then having to make sacrifices yes. and figure out how how you're going to balance things out. Pretty right? much, because I'm not going to necessarily going to do the action I want per se that round. I'm going to look at, okay, what are the gifts on the board right now? And what is what? it doing you want to do next round? Yes, right? exactly. So how what can I, can I afford? What can and I like... switch out to then be able to do what I want Pretty to do next much. time? And not only that, there's also a bit of a catch because the cards that I take from the board, so the cards I get, also we're trying to match these numbers with the numbers of the dice that you see here. So these are the destiny dice. And if I actually match the value, these values with the dice at the end of a day, I will actually get extra servants, which you really want to because servants are kind of a commodity almost, I want to say, in the game. But we need servants to perform most of the actions in the game. A little or? bit, yes. Uh, but the catch here is that obviously, you know, the workers, if we can call them that way, so the gifts here actually have a value, and also some of them show actions on them, and we will actually perform extra actions through them. So let's say that I would have actually placed this card on here. I would first do the action of the Palace of Heavenly Purity, and then I'm going to do the decree action. So in the game, what you're trying obviously to do is also to collect victory points, but the main goal really is to reach the uh, palace of the heavenly purity where the emperor resides with our envoy. Because if we fail to do so at the end of the game, it doesn't matter how many points you got, you're out of the game. So this is the main goal really, you really want to reach the emperor, and then the players uh, that did reach the emperor, we're going to see, well, the person with the most victory points wins the game. So that is the brief explanation <laughs> of how it works. And I'm works. getting the impression that there's a lot more depth in this. Game. There is. It's actually the principle of the game is not difficult at all. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very sim It's quite simple to explain. But as you can see, it's there is a lot going train, on. But there's yeah. so many. There's a lot of decisions to be yeah. made, right? And there's seven different actions. So there's traveling. We're gonna also rebuild sections of the Great Wall that's been damaged by the Huns. We're gonna try and collect jade try to get decrees to our advantage. There's also the intrigue track that is a sort of a tiebreaker but also gives us advantages when we help finish the wall. And then finally we're going to travel down the Grand Canal which will give us extra hand cards and even the Fable Double Worker which is a very special piece in the game that actually counts as a worker but can perform the function of two so it's like a really strong really one. strong. Yes. Extra. Exactly. Right? And it's the only way to get it. So all the actions kind of interlock with each other. They always influence one action will always influence another and that's what makes the game I think so fun and interesting uh, and that's why we fell in love with the game when we discovered it. 
So, so it's a two, two to four player game? It's right? actually from one to five. Oh, there so you can is, play solo yes, as well. there is a solo mode. There is a special set of cards where you play against an opponent called Mr. Ming and you have to try and beat him. <laughs> so, yeah. and that is good. How long is it? The game takes about, I want to say about 20 minutes per player when you know the game. So it's between one hour and one hour and a half. If you play with five, obviously it's going to be a longer game. But yeah, and a solo game, maybe a half an hour? I would say a half an hour, yeah. yeah. Something like that. So not too bad, but it's no. got a bit of meat to it, right? It has got quite a bit of meat, <laughs> but it's indeed. It's uh, But it's not like a three hour game. It's, right. uh, so a meaty game that's maybe a little on the lighter side, or yes. time wise. I'll say like, yeah, medium heavy, Fantastic. as we like to call it. Thank you so much. That yes, is Google from Game Broker.